Hello everyone, before we get started with today's video, I just want to give a shout out to one of my channel supporters. So if you don't know, I have a channel membership and I have a few tiers and one of those tiers, the top tier, is a massive, massive help to this channel. And one of the perks of that tier is that I'll give you a shout out. But I'll also give a shout out if I think the channel is well worth checking out. And Kiki Hobby Repair fits both of those criteria. So Kiki is another creator on YouTube and he's also a top tier supporter of my channel. So first of all, Kiki, a massive thank you for being a top tier supporter. The £22.99 per month is a massive help. It doesn't seem like a lot, but trust me, it is. It does help. Uh, £22.99 per month buys me and my entire family a Chinese meal. So massive thank you for that, first of all. And to everyone else, if you could head over to his channel and check out some of his stuff. He does a lot of the similar stuff that I do, uh, such as Nintendo Switch repairs. He does a lot of DIY projects and things like that. And the content that he has produced is really good. And I really, really do think you should go and check him out. Genuinely, I've, I've, I enjoy his stuff. I do watch uh, whenever whenever I can. I mean, I'm a, I'm a busy guy. I don't get to watch them all. But uh, I've watched quite a few of his videos. And the stuff I've seen is really good. And one thing that he's got that I haven't, a clean workbench. I cannot keep my clean work my workbench clean. He can. So definitely worth checking him out for that. So Kiki, massive thank you once again. And to all of the other channel members as well who support this channel. And to everyone just for watching. A big, big thank you. But I'll leave a link down in the video description to Kiki's channel. I'll just give you a little bit of a view of some of his stuff. So he's got some Nintendo Switch repair stuff. He's got some DIY microscope light project project. This was really good. I really enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely go check that out. He does a lot of Nintendo Switch stuff, so uh, if you're into that kind of stuff, please go and check him out. Give him a follow. He's only got 70 subscribers as of filming this. I'm about to upload this video right now, so if we could see him on a few hundred subscribers by, uh, you know, tomorrow, um, I mean, it's Tuesday right now, Tuesday the uh, 13th of July. Uh, if we could see him on a couple of hundred subscribers by tomorrow, give him that little bit of a boost, that would be absolutely fantastic. But a big, big thank you once again to all of the channel supporters. And now back to the video. Hey everyone, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on yet another PlayStation 5 which has been sent in. And this one is yet another technician damage. So if we take a look at this ticket which was sent with the console, it says PS5 HDMI port plus lifted pads. And what I mean by technician damage is that someone's had a go at replacing the HDMI port and they've torn some traces on the motherboard itself. So I haven't taken a look at this yet. I was waiting until I did the video, but there's no HDMI port and this has been pretty badly mangled as well. Uh, so I'm seeing more and more of these, to be honest, where the HDMI port is being mangled. And to be honest, I think they're coming from the same place. So they're not coming from Console Repair London, which is the place where which sends me these. He's getting them in like this. And basically, I think they're all coming from the same place. So, yeah, it's really not a good thing when these are being damaged by another technician. And I think it's the same technician that keeps doing it. That technician, you probably, you probably need to keep away, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to attempt to turn it on because it's kind of pointless. Actually, yes, I will. I will turn it on and I will make sure it at least goes to a white light first. There's no HDMI port there, so it's not going to cause any damage. So I will at least turn it on and make sure it does turn on. Okay, we have a disc inside. Uh, let's just uh, make sure that's all working. FIFA 21, PS5 edition. Cool. So let's just make sure it goes to a white light before we actually go any further, and it does. So the white light means that all system checks have passed and that it's ready to turn on. So let's just press and hold the power button, shut it down again, and we can start disassembling it while we're waiting for it to shut down. So like I said, this is not the first one where I've seen with technician damage. It's actually the second one I've seen in the past week. Uh, so it's pretty annoying. I think I've seen about four in total now, which has had technician damage. This is very, very dirty. It's going to need a good clean on top of whatever work we need to do on it. But that being said, let's get into uh, 
taking this apart, shall we? So while I've got your attention, if you do like this type of content and you want to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you're notified when I upload. So I'm going to skip through the disassembly process because there is an awful lot of screws to remove. I believe it's 64 in total to get to the motherboard. So I'll skip through this bit, I'll fast forward it and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Right, okay, and we're inside the console now, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, way too much liquid metal on this, uh, on this console. You can see here that it's all grouped up in the corner. But it's all good, we'll sort that out later on. Okay, so let's just take a look at the HDMI port then. Right, okay, so if we take a look at the circuit here, where you can see that we've got most of the pins intact, bar one, and um, that is pin number 18. So pin number 18 is the 5 volt line. So basically, the 5 volt line is going to provide power to the HDMI circuit and allow it to work. So without that there, we've got absolutely no chance of getting a display. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to run a jumper wire to pin 18 and then run it to the trace where it's broken off. So it should be a relatively straightforward job or if you've got any experience with trace repair, it should be. And the PlayStation 5 ports have actually come down massively in price over the past couple of weeks or so. So if we take a look at these ports here, this is a brand new port for the PS5. And there's two different types of ports available. Let me just bring over my little tub of spare bits, or rather replacement parts. So this is where I keep all of my parts in this tub. Um, people have been asking me for a link to this tub. I bought it from Amazon, but I'm not 100% sure on the link for it because the original seller basically um they're no longer on, on amazon i don't know why but for some reason they're not but it's called aid tech uh, and it's called aid tech box also you might be able to get it from aidtech.com not sponsored but it's a really good tub um i think this cost cost me around about 20 british pounds so if we take a look at the ps5 hdmi ports we've got two different types of hdmi port we've got this one here and we've got this one here. So basically, there's no difference. There is a number on the right hand side one, which you can just about see in the in the uh, reflection there. There's a number on that one, there isn't on that one. So you'll find both of these on AliExpress and there's absolutely no difference on the port at all. I'm not sure why, but the ones with the numbers on cost more. But there is absolutely no difference whatsoever. The port is exactly the same and they both work exactly the same as well. So, honestly, buy the ones without the numbers on because you're never going to see it, so who cares? Uh, I'm not sure where that comes from. Never mind. But, yeah, honestly, buy the ones without the numbers on. They work just as good. They are exactly the same port. And they're actually cheaper, which I don't know why. I'm not going to get into that, but never mind. Okay, let's go back under the... Under the microscope and let's see what we can do about getting this thing working again okay so like i said pin number 18 the trace for that is missing so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to restore that trace well first of all what i want to do is just clean up this area and basically prepare it for a new port so first things first i'm going to add some flux because we're going to need flux to help us to solder And then I'm going to replace the solder that's on these pads here with some fresh leaded solder. There we go. And then what I can do is just drop a new port on. And these are the ones without the numbers on, as you can see. And it's a perfect fit. So absolutely perfect fit there. 
Okay, so now that the pads are tinned, I'm going to take a brand new HDMI port. So the ones I'm using, whoops, the ones I'm using here are the ones without the numbers on. Uh, I'm just going to pop that in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these lined up by using some hot air from above. Let's add some flux. And I'm just going to basically flow this down so as it lines up and basically secures itself in place so as I can solder the ground legs. Let's just move that out of the way a second just while we're melting the solder on the top. Okay, I'm going to press down on that to seek it down in place and let that settle. And that should be lined up nicely. Let's have a look. And yes, indeed, it is. So looking at that on an angle there, you can see it is nicely lined up. So all we need to do now is just secure those pins in. And we should be good. So I seem to have lost the 0.1 microfarad capacitor. That thing always blows off. I'm not going to lie, that thing literally always blows off. It's really annoying to be honest. But it's not actually needed. It's a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor and it's genuinely not needed for functionality and it won't affect the display at all. So I've actually been asked that a couple of times now by people who've lost that capacitor and every time I tell them uh, a 0 0.1 microfarad smoothing capacitor isn't going to affect the console in the slightest. I'm just going to drag over these a couple of times. And I apologise if it goes out of focus. The problem with these ports is the pins are pretty narrow. And it's a little bit difficult to see. So I have to hold the board on an angle to be able to get a good camera view. So it goes out of focus every now and again. Okay, so I'm just going to wick away this little blob of solder. And that should be good there. So all of those pins should be soldered. So let's just clean up and we'll have a look. So I'll use some isopropyl alcohol. And a toothbrush just to give it a good scrub. Okay. And now I'm going to give these pins the good old nudge test. Just to see if they're all soldered. We've got pin number 19. That's good. And then pin number 18 is missing, so we'll be working from pin 17. And let's just dry this off first, actually, just so I can see a little bit better. So a bit of hot air, just to dry off the isopropyl alcohol. And now we should be able to test these pins.
Good. So, pin number 18 is obviously missing, so we're going to restore that trace. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape back a bit of the trace using a blade. So I have a little bit of flux there. And then I'm going to tin the trace just to allow me to solder to it. There we go. And then I'm going to take some jumper wire. So the jumper wire I use, I've actually got a video on the channel of how I'll get my jumper wire. I'll take it from a microwave. And it is 0 0.17 millimeters in diameter, and it's absolutely perfect for HDMI circuit repairs. So I'm just going to tin some of this trace, or the jumper wire rather, by scraping it with the iron. Just tack it down there, so that's not actually soldered, but I did want to tack it down first. Add some more flux and now I can hold it with the tweezers so as I can get a better joint on it. And that should be nice and solid. Let's trim that away using a blade. Just give that a dry there, just to allow me to be able to see. And yep. Oh, damn it. I broke it off. Well, <laughs> that, that kind of thing is going to happen. Okay, let's break that away again. Okay, we might have a bridge between pin 17 and 18 there. Okay, let's just check that with the meter. I think it's probably still bridged though. So I've got the multimeter into continuity mode. And let's go ground. Yep. So we're going to bridge to ground. So pin number 17 is ground. And that is bridge to ground. Let's try it again. Good. No more bridge. No bridge between 19 and 18. Excellent. And no bridges anywhere else. So that should be pretty much good to go. So over the other side then, I'm just going to finish soldering these ground legs. There was a bit of solder still inside those holes by the look of it, which is pushed through. Absolutely fine. So one tip for soldering a through hole component, or these ground legs for example, is to make a contact with the soldering iron between the leg and the pad. And that's going to allow heat to transfer to both at the same time. Uh, 
Mm, a little bit too much solder there. Whoops. There we go. That's beautiful. Just clean this up with some more isopropyl alcohol. And done. Good to go. Or at least we should be good to go. Alright, so lastly, one thing I always do whenever I do a HDMI port of any kind, or any port for that matter, is just clean out the inside of the port. So I use a bit of isopropyl alcohol, just spray it into the port and just give it a little scrub. Just try and get any flux that might be in there. And there we go. Awesome. Okay, so let me just dry off this workbench a little bit. It's covered in isopropyl alcohol. Okay, and as for the liquid metal, I need to clean that up as well. So I'm going to sort that out. Okay, this liquid metal I am going to have to clean off and get rid of. I will not get rid of, but I'm going to have to at least clean some of it. I mean, look at this. This is absolutely ridiculous how much is on here. That was a lot of liquid metal. So I've got rid of a good amount of that. So what I need to do now is just spread this out. Mm. That's not spreading. I think it may be contaminated. I think someone's put thermal paste on this before they've put liquid metal on it. Because that is it seems greasy let me try and show you that so here's the liquid metal can you see kind of a film on it sort of thing Yeah, I think this is contaminated. Oh yeah, that's definitely got something else on it other than liquid metal. Alright, I think that might have it. Okay, so liquid metal has been respread. What I can only imagine has been sufficiently. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, let's get this back together. Let's test it out and see if we've done a good job or not. So I'm going to clean this heat sink. That is very, very dusty. Yeah, so considering these consoles are only, you know, a year old or so, well, not even a year old yet. Uh, but considering they're not even a year old yet, it makes you wonder what these are going to be like in a couple of years' time. Uh, the ones that don't get opened up. It does make you wonder. Okay, so I'm going to put this back together just enough to give it a test. 
because I don't want to be putting the best part of 70 screws in on the, until I've tested it. That is for certain. I do still need to get everything screwed down and lined up. So it's not going to line up perfectly because nothing's screwed down. But that I don't care about as long as I can see it working. Okay, and uh, let's turn it on. Okay, we have a white light. Switch over to the capture card. Yes, we have a display. Fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay, and that is working. The resolution of the mini 4K isn't supported. Um, it is. I don't know why it's not showing us 4K. Because it's a 4K capture card. But for some reason, it's just not saying it's supported. Uh, that's that's the cam link. That's nothing to do with... Um, oh, actually, hang on a minute. Right, so I've set this to automatic now. But... It's still saying it's not supported. I might have to restart it. Okay, and let's go back to screen and video. Um, for some reason, it's not picking up 4K on my capture card, but the capture card is always playing up like that, so I really don't know. Uh, unfortunately, I can't test that to look at it in the house, but I'm pretty certain 4K will work absolutely fine. Right, so that is going to be for this video. So let's just summarise on this then. All I've got to do with this now basically is just put it back together, which to be honest, watching someone put 60 odd screws back in, not really funny is it? But let's just summarise on this one then. So this was sent in because it had a damaged pad or it just said lifted pads. I didn't actually know how many was lifted until I actually got in there. It turns out it was just one. So pin number 18, which is the five volt line. So without that line, then no, no power can get to the HDMI circuit and it won't be able to recognize that a HDMI has been plugged in. But by restoring that one trace and installing a new HDMI port, we've managed to get this console working again. Yes, I haven't been able to test 4K because my capture card keeps playing up. Uh, it's something about the Elgato capture cards. I just don't know why, but it's just not working on the USB capture cards. Uh, it's a little bit weird. Uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out, but I will test 4K when it gets into the house once it's back off the bench, and I'm sure it'll work absolutely fine. But unfortunately, whoever looked at this last, I don't know whether it was an amateur or whether it was someone who was supposed to be a professional, but someone damaged one of the traces and therefore it ended up on my bench. But that's going to be for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I will always do my best to answer. If you want to organise your own repair, you can do so by getting in touch using the email address in the video description and I'll give you a custom quote based on your problem. If you want to support the channel, if you do like what I do, you can become a channel sponsor by using the join button just below the video, or you can become a Patreon supporter as well, and all channel sponsors and Patreon supporters get early access to these videos, or you can just click on subscribe, watch another video, and help out the channel that way. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.